What is going on, folks? Welcome back to the Beard of Wisdom podcast. I am your host, Les McDaniel, and I am so thrilled that you've decided to join me once again. And I got to tell you, I want to remind you, it's so important that you understand that what you're doing here today is to inspire what is uninspired in you, to unstick what is stuck, and to liberate that leader within you. We exist for this very purpose, and we do this by dripping wisdom on you over across all the social media channels that you can imagine. We do this at Facebook and Instagram at epicfusion.life. We do this at TikTok at bearded.wisdom. We do this at YouTube at Bearded Wisdom. You can find me, and we are dripping stuff all the time. And if you want to see some of the tools and you want to see this bearded face that is before you, uh, well, you can't see it on if you're listening to this on the podcast, but you're on YouTube, you can see me there and watch these videos live and get a little bit more of in-depth insightful look at what tools we're actually pointing to and what we're using to help you expand yourself in this wonderful thing we call life. Now, today as we move forward, I really want to dive in. We're we're right here in the middle of Thanksgiving and Christmas. I hope your Thanksgiving was amazing. I know that I got to spend it with family and friends, and it was such an amazing time to be able to have my kids around, my nephews, my nieces, some, some of my closest friends from the Front Row Dads community. I got to tell you, you will not miss out on much of that uh, that excitement as we go through these, because I'm sure there will be many stories that will come in the future as we talk about this particular holiday season and all the dynamics that can come with that. But today, I want to talk about potheads. <laughs> I know, potheads. That yeah, it's a catchphrase. We're we're, we're doing some little low hanging uh, fruit here just to get you guys sucked in and drawn in. What in the world am I talking about when it comes to potheads? Well. There was this amazing study by Jean-Henri Faber, who is a French etymologist. And he did this uh, experiment where he took these caterpillars. They're, they're called processionary caterpillars. And he guided each one up to the rim of a pot. And the way these processionary caterpillars work is that they literally are a procession of caterpillars. One gets on the, on the tail end of another one, and he sticks to the leader's Uh, tail end and follows them wherever that leader goes. And so he gets all of these caterpillars lined up on the edge of this pot, and he has them go around and around in circles. And each of the caterpillars is following the caterpillar in front of them, thinking that there is something there that they are being led to. But meanwhile, those of us who can imagine, they're going in a circle, and they're just following each other's tails. They're not going anywhere. They are just truly circling around this world, in a, their world, this small little world of this pot, and, and they're not going anywhere. And they think they are. How many of us are doing that today? How many of us are following someone in our world, and we think that they're the ones that we should be leading, I mean following, and we think that they are our leaders, only to find out that in truth that they're just following another caterpillar, and then that caterpillar is following another caterpillar, and that one and so on and so it goes, until finally it comes full circle and that leader caterpillar that's in front of us is doing nothing more than following our tail of many other caterpillars that are before it. It's, it's literally that we're all just following one another. It's like sheep that are leading sheep, sheep herding sheep, who herd, herd sheep, who herd more sheep, who herd more sheep. And we're not really gaining ground on a lot of things sometimes in our life. I, I feel this way. I have felt it. My life can be straight up. I, can, I am a mess. And what do I mean by I am a mess? Well, I've come up with this acronym recently called MESS, <laughs> which stands for Mental, Emotional, and Spiritual States. You see, that is where my passion lies. It is in helping you. It is helping my clients, my, my, those people that I guide and I coach and, I, and my, all my keynotes and everything. It's all really built on helping you work through and create out of your mess, giving you that healthy mess, that healthy mental, emotional, and spiritual state. It's such a key component to how we as human beings begin to thrive in this world, beginning to understand that the mess is actually always there. It's never not there. We are born into this impossible situation where we don't know what we're doing. We don't come into this world with some sort of forehand knowledge of what this is supposed to look like. We die out of this life, not even knowing what's next. And so the majority of our days are really only what we can experience in this particular moment. We are nothing but living experiences. We don't remember, I mean, our memories of the past are really only memories in the present moment of something that we are reflecting on something that doesn't even exist anymore, quite frankly. 
oh, sure, you might have pictures of it and you might have some sort of recording or you might have whatever it is, but it's not the same thing that was occurring when we were in that present moment, nor could it ever capture the full breadth of what is happening all around us during that present moment. And so as we are looking at the flower pot of our lives and the ways in which that we are some, somehow following the tales of, of other leaders, ultimately just leading full circle back to us, what I can tell you is, is that this plays out in so many different ways. And I believe it's built on a lot of ideologies. You guys have heard me talk to, about ideologies and ideologies, however you like to say it. I like to bounce between the two personally. And ultimately what you're going to find in this process of, of working through these ideologies is that we, we, we're, we, we listen to all these different leaders in the business space, the religious space, our family space even. And we forget that all of these people that we are following are also following someone else. And they, they followed in the footsteps of giants that came before them. And that today that none of us are here because we were the leader of all leaders. We didn't land in this space with some sort of foreknowledge, right? We did not land here knowing that we were divine beings get put placed here by some massive, undescribable, omnipresent, omni, omniscient God that, that born this whole thing out of some sort of stellar thing that exploded and, and brought all this to, to be, come into being. And we can go down the science one of these days. It's a pretty exciting experiment to, to really to dive into how we actually might have gotten here, how things were created, how our elements that were brought together to create the earth, to create this flesh and bone, to create the cosmos, how all of that transpired is so unbelievable. And it only seeks to expand our understanding of God, not shrink it as so many of those who are stuck in some sort of ideology or an idolatrous way of thinking about creation. And I will be the first to tell you that for me, I am more in love with God the more I begin to understand how science and religion and, and the social aspects of who we are actually are all in alignment, folks. We are doing nothing more today. We're born out of the same stuff that stars are. That These stars literally are, are busting up, blowing up, and creating the elements that then somehow create this place we call Earth that ultimately then create, oh, it's, I don't even need to go down. We're, I told you I wasn't going to go down that path, and I did. I chased the rabbit. But we're going to bring it back now. And I want you to understand that we say things about the way that we live our lives and the way that we experience other individuals and the way that we, uh, we lead others. Maybe, maybe you can remember back in the day when you were in elementary school and you would be on your way to lunch and the teacher would say, okay, get in line. And immediately we find ourselves lining up in lines. And, and it seems like our whole existence is about showing up and lining up in lines. Traffic, it's, it's getting in line. I've never for the life of me, yesterday I was going to pick up my daughter at the airport and it was this experience where there's two lanes and there, and that goes underneath the area of arrivals and one lane, I mean, it's backed up. I, I mean, I bet it's backed up 300 yards and yet right next to it is another lane. And this other lane also goes directly into the same space, one lane over. Yes, I have to pull over to get in to pick up my daughter it's there for us to use. And yet so many of us just pull in and see the longest line and just assume, well, I got to get at the end of this line and I got to wait for the next hour for to pick up my, my uh, passenger who just arrived to come see me. And I just don't understand it. But instead, I, I took that other lane, like all many others who were those who decided to step out of line and, and drive up and very quickly pull in, didn't cut in front of anyone. It was an open space. And my, my daughter jumps in and we're off in less than five minutes. Meanwhile, back at the other end of this, this wonderfully long line, people are going to be there all night long. And we get, then complain and we get bitter and upset because we're just following orders. And the orders of our life are get in line. Don't believe me? What do we say to someone who, who is actually in a disruptive state in the office or at home? And what do we do when you, when someone calls you, uh, is ugly to you? We, we, we tell them you're out of line because they're not following the system and the processes and the, and the cultural norms that we have expressed in our life. And yet 
what I'm here to tell you folks is that there are no such things as these cultural norms. They're, they're only real in as much as we decide that we choose to follow them. They're only real in as much as we decide that the person that we that has claimed these things for us, it, that, that this, this is the way it should be, and the many who came before us and told us that this is how we are supposed to address life, have led us down this path of believing that that is the only way that we should do it, that there's only one way. And everybody's claiming their own truth, and then they're saying that this is their, the only truth. Or the, there's the, my favorite ones who say there is no truth, <laughs> which in turn is claiming that there is a truth of no truth. And we live in this space of things that just really don't make sense. Like the caterpillar, we simply put on the blinders and we trust that the person that is in front of us, that is leading us, is going somewhere. We are so convinced of this that we find ourselves simply kissing the butts of all the leaders that are in front of us, uh, only to realize later on that what's really going on here is that they're just kissing our butts, our chapstick butt lined with, and, and we're all just running around here, making sure that everybody is, is okay, saying amen to all the, 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 the bureaucracy and the legalism and the fundamentalism and the, and the ideologies that we agree are the way. These tribalistic kinds of traditions, and I'm not saying that traditions aren't good. You gotta hear me, let's back up and just, pump the brakes for just a second. As we're talking about this, one of the things that I want you to realize is I want you to understand that there's nothing wrong with following that person that is in front of you who may be ultimately in full circle of who, of, of us all just leading us to nowhere. There's no question in my mind that there's, I mean, this is kind of what it feels like in politics, maybe. Maybe you've experienced this where, you know, Trump is now going to run again in 2024, right? I don't care where you land on this whole thing. But it just feels like a caterpillar following another caterpillar following another caterpillar, ultimately around the circle of this pot. We're truly acting like potheads, just, just zoned out, blitzed out of our minds to whatever these cultural norms are. And we're sitting there. And what I want you to recognize is that this, we, we are, we've convinced ourselves that, that kissing the butt of the person in front of us, that leader that's in front of us, is somehow healthy and somehow beneficial, only to realize that it's full circle, it's just someone else is kissing my chapstick ass. Because of all the people that have followed me who said, we're, we're just all doing the same thing. And so there's such an important thing here that we must begin to learn. And sometimes, if you truly want to be a liberated leader, it means breaking out of that line, stepping out of the line to really see what it is that is going on in our world. And yet what holds so many of us back, I believe, at the core of our existence is this idea of inhibitions, of limiting beliefs, um, and sometimes, sometimes prohibitions. And so we have this amazing tool at, uh, in, in the giant frameworks called the Who Says You Can't. And on the one side, we have this inhibition and on the other side, we have prohibitions. And these are two things that sometimes keep us from actually moving forward. One of those is real. One of those is, is dedicated to keeping, making sure that we don't, that we stay in line, follow the rules, et cetera, et cetera, for the safety of everyone, for the highest good of all people. Usually, <laughs> one could say that some of the stop signs that we have and some of the posted speed limits are, you know, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe they're important, maybe they're not. But what I can tell you is that we are, many of us are bound, blocked, truly stuck in the inhibitions of life. These are the limiting beliefs. These are the things where people have just continually fed this idea that we're not good enough or that we don't have everything that is, uh, that qualifies us for a certain position, task, whatever it might be. I remember even from the early days, having people tell me when I got married to my wife, of 20, almost 28 years ago, that I was so young. Like, 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 how could you imagine? I mean, how can you even be begin to think about at 21 years old getting married? You have so much time right now, so much life. This is, you're the youngest you're ever gonna be, and you have opportunities to go sow your royal oats or whatever that means. Go travel the world, do all these things. 
These these things that we that that are it's great if you did that, man. I'm not kidding you. That is an amazing opportunity that people get to have in this world. However, there is a limiting belief that states that that's what I'm supposed to do, that I'm too young to get married. And the same thing just continued throughout my life. I mean, I got out of school and I started a business. And you would have thought that I had tried to run for president at 21, 22 years old. 24, uh, closer to 24. Let's go with 24, I think. Uh, this is rough math right here off the top of my head, but that's for you. We'll go with 24. And at 24 years old, you're right. I didn't know what I was doing, but I never had more drive. I never had more energy than I did right then and there to actually launch myself into something that I truly believed in and wanted to do and to build something, to, to tap into my gifts and to, to grow something. Was it perfect? Was it a, did, did we fall short? Oh, yes. Did I think it was a failure at times? Oh, my goodness, yes. There, there are many of times where I thought that I was a failure. There were times where we, we, we made the wrong decisions and we decided that, that what we really needed to do was to move someplace and that was going to change it. And that turned out, you know, you know how it is. You, you start to figure, try to figure things out. And so I'm wondering what the, those limiting beliefs are for you. What are the inhibitions today that are keeping you from actually moving forward in your life? Now, there's also these prohibitions. There are things in our world that can that literally keep us from moving forward. If you wanted to be a doctor and you didn't go get a, a, your PhD and, and become a doctor, well, there's some, thank God, there's some limiting factors in that that keep you from actually cutting me open and starting to do surgery on me. I would hate to hire the guy who didn't make it uh, through his medical degree and have him do brain surgery on me. Now, does that mean that for all times and all places in every situation, every circumstance, that you don't want someone to treat you if they're not a doctor? Well, I doubt that is true. We, we somehow forget that there was one time in our world where we didn't have doctors. What we had were people who were testing things, grabbing leeches and putting them on people thinking that, well, if we get rid of that old bud and then maybe this will heal him and get him or bloodletting for that matter, where we're just releasing blood as though that's somehow going to reproduce healthy blood cells or whatever. We have come a long way, folks. And, and it is good that we have prohibitions in life. It's good that we have stop signs at certain intersections. It's good that we have stop lights and, and that, or I should say, traffic lights, because they're not always stoplights. Sometimes they're yield and go lights, you know. <laughs> Let's not forget about that. But those prohibitions, those tend to be there for the, the betterment of society, the betterment of humanity. And there are some pretty obvious ones. However, those inhibitions in our life, those are the things that truly can hold us back. They, they, they hold us back because they get, they get under our skin quite literally. They, they're the, the whispers in our own ear from our, that imposter that is within our brain telling us that, oh, they don't really care about what you've got to say today. They're not really interested. Who are you to actually speak about this? And so I really want you guys to begin to ask some questions today. What is holding you back? Take some time after, at the end of this podcast, grab your journal and really dig in. What are the inhibitions and the prohibitions? that are actually keeping you from moving forward in the direction that you want? What are those things that when you look at the, the, the outcomes of your life, who are you following today that is actually just leading you in a circle because they're doing nothing but following the person in front of them, in front of them, in front of them that's ultimately following you? When we are chasing our tails, I can tell you that we have a different energetic disposition there's not a lot of creativity. There's this, this feeling maybe even of depression. There's this struggle that we have within our mind to actually have solid, encouraging, strong belief in ourself and in our gifts and in our capacity to actually achieve our highest level of potential in this world. Everything seems to be screaming at us. What are those things? What is it screaming? Instead of ignoring it, instead of medicating it, instead of drowning it in the TV and the bright screens that we have, including this one that you're watching right now or that you're listening to right now, 
What would it look like for you to stop, to sit, and to draw those two categories, two sides of the two columns? One is the inhibitions and one is the prohibitions. And to write those out, what's keeping you from actually achieving the life that you desire, to becoming that liberated leader? What of those can you step out of line for to get a good view of where you want to go, to actually see if there's a clear lane ahead of you so that you can move through quickly, get to that destination that you desire, and make the, take the actions, take the steps, move in the right direction, find the right leaders, those who are actually not following the, their tails, but who are actually out there making an impact in this world. What are they doing differently? How did they overcome their inhib inhibitions? How did they work around the prohibitions that might have been in their, the, the, the wave of them actually achieving what they desired? These are the questions that I want you to ponder today as you're moving through this Thanksgiving into Christmas season and ultimately into New Year so that you, as we begin to launch ourselves into this, uh, this space of beginning to make plans for what next year could look like, if you could remove those prohibitions, no, sorry, if you could work around the prohibitions and remove the inhibitions, those self-limiting beliefs, what would it look like for you at the end of 2023 compared to this year as we move forward through this amazing thing we call life? I hope that you will find a way through this mess and develop a healthier mess that is your mental, emotional, and spiritual state so that you truly can accomplish and, and live into the goals and the dreams that you have for yourself and your life. That's all I got for you today, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon, and we'll talk. Hopefully, we'll talk before Christmas. I'm confident we will. See you soon.